What's up Knights, Xantos here, and in today's video we are going to be taking a peek at the Dark Onslaught dungeon. It's been out in game for a while now, but uh, I actually haven't covered it with a tutorial video. So in today's video we're going to be taking a peek at the bosses and uh, seeing which heroes I use and what gauntlets I use in order to take them down successfully. Now in today's first demonstration we're going to be using the Rebel Gauntlet. Our two heroes of choice are Dr. Phlox and Belendu. Uh, the reason for this is due to the fact that the Rebel Gauntlet has mage speed. We're going to be able to smash on Belendu's regenerate, which generates rage as well. And uh, if we take a peek at my axe here, you can see I have a 90% chance to grant protect on chain start. Uh, that's really huge with the Rebel Gauntlet too. You'll see we're generating a good chunk of rage almost on every single chain start. Uh, along with this, we're going to be burning the enemies. Belendu's Rage is strong versus burn, so uh, burning them up with Dr. Phlox's base power is the strategy, and then launching tons of meteors with Belendu. <clears throat> uh, this boss is also susceptible to burn. Uh, at later levels, uh, occasionally I'll switch out uh, and use Vordrite or Petra for this boss, actually. But uh, due to the fact that it's an uh, early stage here, you can see that I'm using a level 55 Phlox. Uh, I feel like it's a good idea to try and use your lower level heroes early on if you can. Then you can save uh, your heavy hitters for the later floors. In our second demonstration, I'm going to be using the Champion's Gauntlet along with Alder and Vordry. I know that seems like a bit of an odd pairing, but uh, the reason for this is just because it's an early floor, uh, these enemies aren't going to be doing too, too much damage to me, so I know that if I just box them up with the Champion's Gauntlet and let them hit me a little bit, I'm going to be generating a good chunk of rage still. You can see we're at full rage here. Uh, this boss is actually a uh, cult type, so you won't see me launching Vorderai's Rage against her in fear that I will kill myself, <laughs> in all honesty. Uh, Vorderai gets pretty dangerous to use, but uh, his base power burn is still working very well for us, so launching that there, <clears throat> dealing a nice chunk of damage to the enemies. I wouldn't say this is the uh, ideal strategy for it, but... Uh, a what my focus of the video is today is to essentially show you that uh, you can be very diverse in the Dark Onslaught dungeon. I'm honestly trying out different pairings and uh, different combinations on the regular. I'm consistently trying out new stuff and seeing what works. And uh, I've found in my practices that uh, there's quite a few different ways to achieve success. Alright, in floor 3 here, uh, we're going up against the Dastardly Wolf. <clears throat> Our two heroes of choice are going to be, oh my god, I'm forgetting, uh, Petra and, wow, blanking here. Blanking. Need to remember the hero's name. Bayani! There we go. Sorry about that. Using Bayani for uh, that quick expose. Now, these back row uh, vampires have the ability to debuff you, so... We're essentially just trying to deal as much damage as we can to Freki right off the bat. You can see, I, I think I'm running 300% mage build here, and uh, we're doing a really, really big chunk of damage with Petra's base power. Uh, he's exposed as well <clears throat> with Bayani's base, giving us that extra little bit of damage. Petra's rage takes out the back row, and with another base power, we're able to take out that floor extremely quickly. That's uh, definitely a boss that I don't stress over as much whenever I see it in uh, the Dark Onslaught Dungeon. Now, uh, as you can see here on the left, that is my main build of Mage. And with a quick switch of three pieces of gear here, uh, you can see we're switched to a 200% Warrior build. Uh, we're going to be using Warrior for this one so that we can have that uh, extra damage with Ericsson. And uh, we're bringing McLeod along with along with us as well so that uh, we can use his base power to just clean up that back row if we need him to. I feel like this is a, a pretty solid combination for this floor. It's the one that I, I like using the most. Uh, we're actually using the Dark Gauntlet here so that we have a uh, warrior speed with, with Ericsson. <clears throat> Dark Gauntlet is not one of my, my preferred gauntlets by any means. There is actually just a buff recently with it which makes it a little bit better but 
in all honesty, it, it's not the best warrior gauntlet. Um, if, if you're looking for a really strong warrior gauntlet, the Valiant gauntlet is definitely the way to go, but uh, because we're in the Dark Onslaught dungeon and uh, you need to plan ahead, I actually plan to use the Valiant gauntlet on a later floor here, so that's why I ended up using the Dark gauntlet for this example. Uh, Erickson's base power is able to keep the front row weakened. His rage power is able to freeze all enemies on the field except for the uh, the lead boss in uh, the Dark Onslaught dungeon here. Can't freeze the boss anyway, though. Now, a big thing that that everyone says that you, you shouldn't have to do is don't use pots. Uh, try and find a method where you don't have to use pots. Don't be afraid to use a, a healing pot. Like... It, it, you shouldn't be ashamed to use a healing pot. They're in-game in order for you to use them. So if you get a little bit low at some point, feel free to crack that. We did there. <laughs> Erickson with another frost blade, freezing the field, dealing a good chunk of damage to the enemies. You can see McLeod's big base power able to uh, clean up that back row. Just slicing and dicing on the boss here. No problemo. Cruising through. We're at floor five. Sticking with uh, our warrior build here, this is honestly one of the easiest floor fives that you can get. If you have, uh, I, I think her name's Prella Stoneling as as your floor five. Hermes absolutely tanks this if you have a warrior build. You can see here. I'm pretty sure we use uh, we use this base power twice and we're able to to kill her. So here's the first base power there, boom, huge chunks of damage, I think that was over 500k damage. If you slow down the video you can take a closer peek, I saw a 300k crit there. Uh, throwing out Expose on the entire field as well, deal that extra little chunk of damage. Uh, Brutus base power, Protect, giving us 35% damage reduction, and check out this Rage. Ermis is actually a phenomenal healer, that was a 430k heal on, uh, on the entire exposed field and with our second base power we're able to wrap that up nice and quick. there you have it that's a nice quick run of the dark onslaught dungeon uh, just using a couple different unique pieces and switching from mage to warrior we're able to get to achieve success very quickly now uh, in this next video here this is uh, another floor five but uh, as you can see there there's my main build again and with a very simple switch of shoulders and feet, uh, we're actually able to go up to 120% alchemist. And uh, I just wanted to show that uh, even with that low of hero power uh, and that, that simple of a change, we're still able to uh, take on this floor five with relative ease. Our heroes of choice are Brutus and uh, Gerber for this run. We're going to be stacking on as much acid as we can on the field. Gerber is a cult hero as well, so he's able to take out those uh, back row cultists that can weaken and unfocus you. He's very handy for that, especially on this demon floor. You can see, boom, boom, nice, quick, one, two. His base power is absolutely destructive against these enemies, so definitely uh, not a hero to... to to go unchecked. Going with a little bit of expose with Brutus there, deal that extra chunk of damage. Smashing with the hammer and the, the chaotic gauntlet because uh, chaotic gauntlet is a alchemist speed gauntlet as well as a hammer gauntlet. Nice little combination there and boom. Again, nice, quick, easy. No problems. Diversity, uh, I feel like should definitely be a focus. As you can see here, we bank on unique heroes. Uh, the odds of getting uh, unique shards to legendary shards, you have an 80% chance at legendary and a 20% uh, chance at unique. And honestly, like doing it every single day, you're gonna bank. I'm I, I'm seeing some of my unique heroes almost at uh, uh, almost at um, five, six, seven stars now. Like it's crazy. Uh, here again, we're going to be utilizing the uh, warrior build that I talked about earlier. Our heroes of choice are Garen and Logan for this one. 
And the reason I featured this in the video is because I know a lot of people struggle with this floor. Out of all the floors, this is definitely my most, my most hated one. Uh, I use stun charms on ultimate in order to uh, stun lock the cultists because they're susceptible to stun. And uh, along with that, <clears throat> we smash with Garen who has the ability to delay so that we don't get hit with those cultists uh, poison ability. Um, along with that, Logan is a really good healer. He has the ability to weaken the entire field. Uh, Garen's Rage can apply acid, deal a good chunk of damage to those cultists as well. It's a really, really nice combination. Base power dealing almost 180k damage there. Went for the, uh, the, the crit on chain attack there, but was unsuccessful with it. You can see we take a bit of health damage, but even still, we're still in a fairly comfortable position. Garen can just destroy these guys with his base power. Opting to save my rage and just use Logan's base to heal up all of my health again. We got a full field of beasts here, so I opt to go with Logan's full move. This weakens the entire field, and uh, it's also a healing ability. Very, very good. Very good. Amazing rage. <laughs> Diversity! Diversity is, is the, the key to, to success in these videos, in all honesty. If I had stuck with Mage class for the entirety of my time playing, I, I don't feel like I would be as successful in the Dark Onslaught dungeon. Uh, taking all of those heroes to level 60 and trying, trying to use different heroes is definitely successful. <clears throat> I can honestly say that uh, that if you get a uh, floor five of this and you get hit with with five cult or uh, four cultists at the same time in the front front row, that can make things extremely difficult. Not gonna lie, if I do take a loss in the Dark Onslaught dungeon, it's often to this floor and it's often to four cultists at the same time. It can be a little bit difficult to manage. Samuel's a really good hero for that for his his cross field delay as well as. Uh, his ability to stun with his rage if you have him at full stars. Um, Rogue class is uh, is probably my weakest class in all honesty though. I'm, I've been working heavily with Warrior, Hunter, and, um, and Alchemist as well, but I've, I've neglected Rogues to a degree, but I am still experimenting with them. They, they still can be very successful heroes. It's not me saying that they're bad heroes by any means. <clears throat> Running a floor 5 here, uh, opted to just go with a Brutus Azar combo. This is to uh, just show the healing abilities with uh, Azar. It can be really good. This is actually a chaotic gauntlet that I'm using right now, but Azar works phenomenal with the uh, Holy Gauntlet. If you want to use uh, the Brutus and Azar combo, the Holy Gauntlet just works so crazy with it. It's really good. Um, definitely a good way to maintain a nice chunk of health and armor at all times and uh, just mash away with whatever your your best weapon is. <clears throat> the exposure with Brutus as well uh, really pairs well with Azar's Rage so that you can deal 35% uh, extra damage with his Rage Power which in tune grants you with a whole bunch more health because you're dealing more damage with them. It's a nice combo. It's actually really crazy. Uh, looking back at my YouTube channel, my very first Knighthood video was actually a uh, guide to the Onslaught dungeon. And uh, here we are almost, almost two years later, still making Knighthood content and uh, creating a little guide to the Dark Onslaught dungeon, just showing what heroes we use and whatnot. Uh, really appreciate uh, everyone tuning in for as long as they have. It's it's been a an honor to grow with this community and uh, continuously make content for you guys. I'm still having a lot of fun with it, so uh, I always give a thank you in all of my videos to uh, to all the people that give support. Big thank you, guys. Wrapping up this floor here, Brutus Space Power, Full Rage, Azara, Scales of Fate, 
giving us that focus as well as a nice chunk of heals. This boss is out of summons now, so we're able to just mash away on him. And with a few more smashes, that's another completion of the Dark Onslaught Dungeon. Now we can't get lucky every time. Legendary Shards. As always guys, big thank you for tuning in to the channel. Uh, it's really appreciated. Uh, I'm going to continue to try and make some uh, interesting little Dark Onslaught Dungeon videos. I'm hoping to get that uh, that crazy cultist floor where the, the Karnite Assassins can just take you down. I want to try and get a floor 5 of that and I want to try and get 4 Karnite Assassins up at the same time. Maybe make a video on that and how I handle it. But uh, yeah, really appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, hope all of you guys are having a good time in the new year. And as always, Knights, stay grinding.